Good afternoon, alien enthusiasts, and welcome to another Angry Alien Bulletin. You know, if 3i Atlas isn't listening to us and responding to our press coverage, man, it's sure acting like it. Recently, a number of articles have come out about 3i Atlas's behavior post perihelion and just how ordinary it is and how it has a tail as we expect it to have and all that. You can't see it. It, but yeah, it definitely has a tail. I'm going to go ahead and read a little bit of an excerpt from a live science article here to give you an idea of what the coverage has been like lately. The comet appears to lack a dust tail in these images, but it's still there. Zhang, who's the uh, astronomer who uh, took snapped the photo, um, noted that if you look closely at the image, you can see it's a bit brighter on the left side of the comet than on the right. That slight asymmetric glow occurs because we're seeing the tail basically head on, and it's right behind the comet, curving slightly off to the left. In other words, the comet's apparent lack of tail isn't anything to get excited about. So everything we've been hearing from Avi Loeb about how there doesn't seem to be a huge coma or tail or anything that we would expect out of all of the outgassing that should have happened in the aftermath of this extreme non-gravitational acceleration event. And once again, I need to emphasize this NGA event was dozens of times more pronounced than anything we have seen with any natural comet, with the exception of sun grazer comets, comets that are passing far closer to the sun than Mercury and therefore are being bathed in heat thousands of times more intense than 3i Atlas was being subjected to. And yet we are getting an NGA event that dwarfs all comets except for these sun grazers. And even the sun grazers don't quite match what 3i Atlas did. Just a remarkable event. Again, not that impressive, 100 kilometers a day or something along those lines. But when you're moving something that heavy, something that weighs billions of tons, the amount of force required to do that is just incredible. But in any event, live science and many others, by the way, would have us believe that there's nothing unusual going on. As a matter of fact, the object is even glowing green, as it always was. It was never really glowing blue. And all of this other nonsense that we are getting from the mainstream scientific community. And now, as if to reply to those claims, 3i Atlas is at it again. The anti-tail is back, and it's back with a vengeance. And that's not all we have to talk about when it comes to this strange interstellar visitor. <laughs> So before we get to the anti-tail, I think it's important that we visit another particular event or another particular occurrence that's been very strange, and that is the appearance of another object that appears to be between us and 3i Atlas. Well, actually, it doesn't just appear to be. It is between us and 3i Atlas. And so there's been a lot of speculation as to whether or not it was a probe dumped off by the object or there's some connection between them. Even though, however, I just need to make this very clear, and you folks know how open-minded I am when it comes to these sorts of things, this new object discovered by Dr. Borisov, the fellow who discovered the previous interstellar comet, 2i Borisov, it has a speed and trajectory that has no connection whatsoever to 3i Atlas. There's no intersection between the two trajectories, no point to where 3i Atlas could have dumped this thing off. Indeed, their trajectories pass within tens of millions of kilometers from one another, a massive distance that would require an enormous burst of speed, a, a huge amount of propulsion for this object to change trajectories and end up on the course that it's on right now. And I find that to be highly unlikely, it, even though, as I say, yes, the object is between us and 3i Atlas. Yes, it is appearing in the same constellation. 
information. And by the way, the name of the object, I'm just going to go ahead and post it here because my old brain just can't recall these new names that easily. But even though these things are true, the trajectories of these objects are just not close enough to one another for there to be any kind of association between them. That being the case, though, the reappearance of the anti-tail and the incredible magnitude of it just suddenly and abruptly once again in a manner that no other natural comet has ever been able to duplicate against all expectations, this is what we've got now. So this morning at 0410 Universal Time on November 8th, 2025, the interstellar object 3I Atlas showed a complex jet structure. The stacked images captured by three different astronomers, Dr. Yeager, Raymond, and Prosperi, constituting 24 exposures in the green filter, each lasting 35 seconds, two exposures in a red filter, and two exposures in a blue Blue filter show a large glowing halo extending out to half a million kilometers or five arc minutes. The images show at least seven distinct jets, some of which are anti tails in the sunward direction. At the time of the observations, 3I Atlas was 7 to 10 degrees above the horizon. Eventually, twilight interfered with the observations, which took place under a bright moonlight. Is this network? of jets associated with pockets of ice on the surface of a natural cometary nucleus or are they coming from a set of jet thrusters or some kind of plasma engines used for the navigation of a spacecraft at the moment we don't know but here's the problem here's the detail that we really weren't expecting from 3i atlas at this time Given the immense non-gravitational acceleration event that took place when the object was at perihelion, we expected to see the after effects of this event, a cloud of gas and debris, dust, etc. surrounding 3i Atlas and forming a normal tail behind the object. Not an anti-tail, but a normal tail of this debris being pushed away from the object by the solar wind. Instead, after the NGA event, there's a sudden burst of jets, quite a number of them happening all at once and after the NGA event takes place. Now, of course, we have to closely observe 3i Atlas to see what it's going to do at this point. Is there going to be another NGA event? Did something like this happen when 3i Atlas was at perihelion and we were unable to see it clearly? because of the sun being in the way. Is it now going to start accelerating out of the solar system at a faster speed? Is it changing its trajectory again? It's going to be difficult to say until we have quite a number of additional observations. But regardless, after all of these statements were made about 3i Atlas having a tail, yeah, we could barely see it, but it's there and hidden because of the geometry of our observations behind the object. And so therefore, as expected, it has a tail stretching out behind it that we can't see directly away from the sun because of the geometry. If that were the case, we shouldn't be able to see these jets either anti-solar jets heading straight towards the sun should be just as invisible to us, but they're not. They're incredibly visible, indicating that not only does 3i Atlas not have a conventional tail, it instead has this very prominent anti-tail. Now, as far as the lack of conventional tail is concerned and the idea that the tail is just hiding because of our observational geometry, we need to keep in mind that this photograph was taken when 3i Atlas was about 13 degrees away from the sun in the sky. So if the cometary tail is pointing away from the sun, we may be looking at it from an unfavorable perspective of being nearly head on. However, this was also the perspective of 
of this Hubble Space Telescope image when it was captured back on July 21st, 2025. The anti-tail in this image was incredibly apparent in the photograph, and there was a complete lack of a conventional tail in this and every subsequent photograph taken in the month of July. So let's do a quick review of the collection of events that took place before and after perihelion. Prior to perihelion, we had this image of similar jets, although not quite as many, spearing out from 3i Atlas towards the sun with no evidence of a conventional tail at all. And this was just prior to perihelion. It was still several days prior, but nevertheless pretty close as far as the sequence of events goes. And then we had the NGA event. Now, after perihelion, we have a similar looking, a very similar looking event with jets once again spearing out towards the sun, more this time than there were previously. So at this point, we might expect another NGA event, perhaps the object accelerating away from the sun or perhaps changing its trajectory again. But here's the critical thing. If it doesn't change its trajectory at all, if there's no evidence of NGA after an extremely obvious anti-tail, hundreds of thousands of kilometers in length, this is a lot of material forming up this anti-tail. If there's no evidence of any NGA, then this is probably not traditional cometary outgassing. It's probably something else. It's not an engine in operation either. Now, one thing I mentioned in previous episodes is the possibility that 3i Atlas might somehow be triggering coronal mass ejection events from the sun, perhaps to collect additional solar energy for its use as it's making its way out of the solar system. That might have been its motivation all along because the sun is exceptionally active right now compared to previous times in the solar cycle, and it may have happened across our solar system at a time that it decided that it could pick up some extra energy from the sun. If that's the case, we we had all of these anti-tail jets spearing out towards the sun just prior to perihelion and just prior to several coronal mass ejection events taking place on the sun. And now that it's heading away from the sun with a similar anti-tail, are we going to see a similar cluster of coronal mass ejection events? If we see this and no evidence of non-gravitational acceleration, in my opinion, there's a connection there, or at least there should be some signs of a connection that need to be studied further. I'm gonna go ahead and present this theory to Dr. Loeb, assuming, of course, that there's no evidence of non-gravitational acceleration in the next few days. I'm pretty sure that even Dr. Loeb is going to be pretty skeptical about the idea of an artificial object somehow manipulating the sun or triggering coronal mass ejections from the sun. But in theory, it can be done. All you have to do is introduce additional ionization into the solar atmosphere, and theoretically, a CME could be triggered by this. All that being said, there's still something significant that needs to be taken into account here. 3i Atlas is still a considerable distance away from the sun. Even at the moment of perihelion, it was millions of kilometers further away than our planet ever gets from the sun. There really shouldn't have been a lot of cometary outgassing at all. The heat should not have been substantial enough to create these types of effects. These kinds of dramatic jets. It just doesn't seem possible on top, of course, of all of this radical NGA. Regardless of what we discover in the next few days and in the months to come, one thing is very clear. This interstellar visitor is bizarre in the extreme more bizarre even than a muamua and to be honest when we first detected it this summer i never thought i would be saying that
So 3i Atlas continues to confuse and confound, and there are so many mainstream scientists who continue to insist angrily insist in many cases or scoffingly insist that there's nothing unusual about this thing that it's doing so many things that typical comets do there's really nothing to get excited about and that's just simply incorrect i have no idea why they keep saying crap like this except out of pure ignorance or if they're just trying to avoid public criticism and humiliation from their colleagues. Maybe they're just afraid to do anything like that, to make those sorts of claims. And so they are inclined to look for anything that adheres to their narrative, to their perspective on 3i Atlas, and they conveniently ignore all the facts that prove quite decisively that even though 3i Atlas may not be artificial, it may not be here by design, man, it's sure acting like it. And again, even if it is a natural object, all of the anomalies associated with this object are truly remarkable. It is one of the most incredible events in modern astronomy, really in the entire history of astronomy, that this object would happen to come through our solar system at a time that we can observe it, at a time that we can measure various things about its speed, trajectory, composition, position, behavior, etc. It is wonderful to be alive right now when we have an opportunity to study such discoveries regardless of what they might be. But unfortunately, this remarkable time becomes a lot less remarkable, becomes a lot less exciting when mainstream scientists does everything they can do to slap down the wonder of all of this, to insist against all of the evidence, to insist against all of the anomalies. The three I Atlas is an ordinary object, that it's nothing that unusual, that it's probably very typical for interstellar objects, even though we've never seen anything like it before. And that is truly unfortunate. It tends to suppress, especially young people's interest in astronomy, in the wonder that young people people experience when they find out that something new, something unique, something amazing, and perhaps something directed by a civilization other than ourselves. We shouldn't be suppressing that type of wonder and that type of excitement, especially when we can't be certain if an artificial origin is wrong. Instead, we should encourage further investigation. We should encourage examination of the facts while making sure to weed out all of the sensationalism. Believe me, there have been so many extreme claims made about 3i Atlas, from its morphology, from its alleged trajectory, which is far more extreme than what it ended up being, all sorts of things about this object that supposedly have happened that frankly haven't, or at least there's very little proof to suggest that they have. It's important that we weed out the fringe science and the sensationalistic science, but when what remains, when what we have left is still unexplained, that's the time to get really excited and not to slap down anybody who wants to investigate unusual or unpopular theories. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And also, please consider supporting this channel either on Patreon or I'll tell you, the merchandise is flying out the doors. This 3i Atlas stuff is so incredibly popular at the moment. Folks are really worked up about that. If you're interested in any of those things, all the details are in the the description and until next time stay angry about space